It is your host BK from Let's Become Billionaires. We're going to be talking about Tesla stock. Before you go, oh, I've already heard about Tesla stock. I don't need another video. I get it. They sell cars. They're really good at it. They're fast. Nope. We're going to get to new things, new points that people don't talk about on YouTube. We're not even going to talk about cars today. And if we do talk about cars, it's because there is a be there is a greater purpose to what I'm trying to say. So we're going to try to ignore their car business and go into other businesses that they're entering or that they've already entered that aren't really being talked about. Now, the first subject we're going to talk about is how Tesla might go into the S&P 500. And that's going to be a short, uh, short segment of this video because that's kind of obvious. People already know about that. Part two is going to be how Tesla is more of an ETF than a stock. And we're going to go really quickly over each business that it owns and why the business is important. And thirdly, we're going to go into the virtual power plant or VPP of Tesla cars and how they're revolutionizing these, the uh, grid space, the grid energy space, how they're going to change everybody's life and make it easier for people to be the battery storage units of their communities. So if you don't know what that means, don't worry. We're going to get really in depth in this video and, and we're also going to make it very easy for you guys to understand. So get ready, boys and girls. Let's get into it. So guys, let's first talk about Tesla stock entering into the S&P 5. Why is this so important, you might ask? Well, I am glad that you asked. The reason this is so important, guys, is because once Tesla enters the S&P 500, it's going to be attacking a new demographic that otherwise would have never invested into the stock. So let me give you an example. How many people do you know who know nothing about stocks, so instead of buying individual stocks, they might buy the S&P 500 and just hold for the long term? Well, that's a popular strategy. Another popular strategy is to buy the S&P 500 and continuously buy more as you get more money and more revenue, reinvest dividends, and so on. Well, when that happens, the people are essentially buying every stock in the S&P 500 every time they do that. Now, if Tesla was a standalone company, the only people buying Tesla stock are those who buy individual stocks, some hedge funds, some mutual funds, and retail investors. But now we're opening the market to people who are passive investors as well, and that's honestly going to probably become the broad majority of the markets, passive investors, because it's becoming such a popular method with ETFs. The S&P 500 has ETFs, such as SPY, such as VOO. And both of those ETFs carrying Tesla means that if people buy or reinvest their dividends into those ETFs, they're going to also be buying Tesla. In essence, this means that the demand for Tesla shares are going to go up. And as you guys know, supply and demand, ugh, economics, Milton Friedman, all of these people are going to increase the share price of Tesla because when demand increases but the supply remains the same, share prices increase. For instance, if we look at gold, guys, we'll see that gold, the minute gold became an ETF, the share price rocketed. Why? Why, why, why did this happen? In my humble opinion, I believe that the more accessible a certain stock or certain asset is to the masses via ETFs, which is, again, ETFs are what the masses usually buy, the more likely that it is going to be bought, and if it's going to be bought more, the demand increases, increasing the price of that ETF or that asset or that stock. So I'm very excited for Tesla stock. All right, folks, let's move on how Tesla is an ETF. And I know people are going to say, BK, no, 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 it's a stock. You just explained that. I, I'm aware. It's it's literally a stock in the sense that, you know, it's a stock. It's a company. So you're buying a piece of a, you're buying a, piece of a company. That means you're buying a stock. But what I mean by uh, Tesla stock is an ETF is that it is diversified in so many different sectors and so many different businesses that in essence, it is an ETF. You're diversifying yourself by simply buying Tesla stock. And I think if people viewed, viewed this aspect of Tesla more, the valuation of Tesla would actually go higher from the current $800 a share level. Now, let me explain what they're in that some people might not know. Tesla has an insurance business in California, and Tesla insurance is used for one, being able to obviously pay their accidents, but number two, car companies are going to have to have insurance companies, insurance businesses, once autonomous driving comes around. Why? Because if a car crashes and it's the car's fault, not the person's fault, the company's going to have to pay for that. Now, the best way to do this is to have Tesla insurance. But number two, why this is so great is until autonomous driving comes, 
Tesla Insurance has data on the on the users of their vehicles. Meaning, if you drive a Tesla, they know how fast you drive. They know how close you are to other vehicles. They know how often you use your turn signal to turn. They have all of this data on you, so they can give you appropriate rates based on your risk and make huge amounts of money. Whereas other insurance businesses, they have to go off your past accidents, which as we know, doesn't necessarily make you a bad driver per se. And they have to go off of very general stereotypes, such as, hey, you're a white male with a police background. Police drivers are known to be reckless because they think they're above the law. We're going to charge you more. So we're going to be going going past all of that, all of that crappy stereotypes in the past. And we're going to move to the future, which is data driven insurance. Number two business that they're in, obviously they're autos, right? They're, they're cars, they're making cars, they're selling cars. But more importantly, they're in the software business of autonomous driving, which they can sell to other manufacturers and other car companies. They're also in the chip business, having an AI chip uh, that is better than NVIDIA's chip that other car manufacturers are making. So they can start selling this eventually. And furthermore, they're also in the robo-taxi network, competing with companies such as Uber and Lyft. So that's huge. So they're in three businesses within their car segment. On top of that, they're in the solar business. So they have energy storage, like the power wall. They have the actual solar panels that go on top of your roof. And they have a new thing called solar tiles, which are like normal roofs, except these roof tiles create energy for whoever's living there. There are some other businesses that I could totally go into. He's alluded to making uh, airplanes in the future that are electric. He's alluded to making uh, railroads because right now he has trucks. So the next step would be railroads because trucks compete with railroads. So we can easily do that. There's so much on this guy's plate. And right now, I believe it's just the beginning. If you buy Tesla, I believe in 50, 60, 70, 80 years, Tesla's not going to be a car company. It's going to be an electric everything company. Now let's move into one of the business segments that I haven't mentioned yet that they are also involved in, which is the power grid. Let me explain the VPP in part three. The VPP is the virtual power plant. And you might say VPP, you're saying that a lot like it's awesome. It is awesome. You guys should be excited. Imagine this really quickly. Imagine if I said, hey man, you could buy a stock at the lowest price, exactly lowest price, and you can sell it at the exact highest price. Would you do that? Most people would say, yes, if I was able to do that, I would do that rather than long-term invest. Good news for you guys. Tesla is doing that, but not with stocks. They're doing it with energy. As you guys probably know, the grid usually gets its power from a power plant. Now these power plants burn fossil fuels, which are bad for the environment. And they're often overproducing the amount of energy needed. Why? The reason why is because let's say theoretically energy consumption goes up by 20% instantaneously in a given region that the power plant is operating in. Well, if that happens, the power plant is very inefficient in terms of producing energy needed for the output. So therefore, in order to mitigate against the risk of a blackout or a power outage, because they don't have enough energy going to the grid, they overproduce. Now Tesla, on the other hand, has technology using their battery storage packs that can instantaneously, more or less, produce energy for people's homes. The second thing that's a, that's really a big problem is that power plants are like the fish market. You don't you don't hold fish for a week or two weeks or three weeks. You have to sell fish right away. Well, in terms of energy with battery packs, you can store energy, whereas power plants cannot. Power plants must produce that energy right away, like the fish market, right? So Tesla's a huge inherent advantage here. But the best thing coming up, which I think is much more important than the fact that power plants are wasting energy and the fact that they're not e able to instantaneously respond to, to new changes in consumer demand for electricity, the better part is that Tesla's also including the virtual power plant network. What does that mean? Imagine your car with its battery pack inside of it is able to produce electricity for some people's homes and you're able to get paid for doing so. Tesla can do it with electricity. Why? When you plug in your car, it can give you energy when energy is not really needed elsewhere for a cheap price. Then you can go, let's say to work or you can go home or whatever you're doing. You can be making a YouTube video like I am and you can plug in your car into Tesla's network through some kind of, through some kind of plug. At this point, Tesla might see that there's energy need elsewhere. And through, let's say, some parameters that you give the car through its software, you can say, listen, it's cool if you use my battery at these hours or wherever it might be. Tesla might say, okay, well, there's electricity needed for a much higher price. 
we're going to give that person who needs the electricity the electricity and we're going to pay you the difference between what we gave you electricity for and what that person bought that your electricity for. This is huge. Imagine getting paid for something that usually would just be a waste, a nuisance in your garage doing nothing, picking up dust. Now your car is actually making you money like a dividend from a stock. This is outrageous. The great thing as well is that Tesla can use this to incentivize purchasing a new vehicle because either people will purchase the whole vehicle and be able to make money from it or they will buy the car and Tesla will subtract the expense of the battery because they can buy the vehicle now, but all the profits from putting power into the VPP will be taken by Tesla and not by the owner. Therefore, they can make their car cheaper by excluding the cost of the battery when they're selling the vehicle and keeping the profits from the VPP, or they can sell the consumer the entire car and give them the profits of the VPP. This is huge and revolutionary for its business. All right, guys. So in my humble opinion, we're going to conclude really quick by saying this. Tesla is a great car company. It's a great company in general. They're attacking the S&P 500. Once they get to the S&P 500, in my humble opinion, I believe they're at least going to double in share price within a year from being in induced into the S&P 500. Number two, they're more like an ETF. They're in so many different businesses, and I believe each of those businesses will eventually give Tesla a trillion dollar valuation. I don't have too much time in this video to get into why I believe trillion dollars is correct, but what I'm saying is if you look at each segment and you assume that Tesla is going to steal market share from the, each segment, it comes out easily to a trillion dollars at least for their market capitalization. And number three, guys, Tesla has a VPP business coming out and the VPP is incredible for allowing consumers to earn money from having a car, from owning a car, but they can also use this as leverage to one, monetize cars further, so even if people aren't buying cars, they're still paying Tesla in a way, or they can use their car, that incentive to sell more cars. Either way, Tesla's winning. Tesla's going big over the long term, doing huge things, revolutionizing our world, revolutionizing our planet. I believe Tesla stock is a buy, even at these prices, over the very long term. So guys, I thank you for watching. I hope you guys are all staying safe during the current pandemic. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Show your mom, show your dad, show your son, show your grandma. Show all of them about Tesla stock. Show them this video. Show them this channel. I'd greatly appreciate it as it does help. With that being said, guys, I hope you guys are having a great day or a great night, whatever it might be. And bye-bye, guys.